So we're going to start looking at Lambda layers, which are a neat part of Lambda itself. A layer is some stuff that you upload here that gets included into the runtime when you run a function, when you create a function and run it. In other words, you can upload some files in a zip. It becomes a layer and that stuff gets added into the function in addition to your code and all the stuff that you update in the function itself. And that can be part of your build. So this is used in a few ways. So for example, one thing you can do is if you have a large set of dependencies in your function, you can add it as a layer and that just gets kind of added to your function when you update it. So the code that you actually update into your function can be very small, right? Like in the bytes range or small amount of megabytes, the layer itself can actually be kind of large and have a bunch of more stuff into it. So for example, if you can think of putting your node modules directory from your Node.js programs as a layer and attach that to your function, that stuff kind of is already there and in place. And the stuff that you update when you update your function code here is um, more basic, less stuff because it's not the node modules directory. The other thing people use layers for are to make custom runtimes. So for example, PHP runtimes are often used as a Lambda layer that gets added to that function runtime to that environment. And it has PHP installed and PHP FPM and all that good stuff. And it can run web requests and all that good stuff. All right, so we're gonna look at layers. It's gonna be across a few videos. The first thing I wanna do is edit our policy here once again, because we are going to edit our Node.js program here. We're gonna include the S3 API from AWS so that it can list out the objects inside of an S3 bucket. Now to do that, this actually needs permission to talk to the S3 buckets in question. So within our policy here, we are gonna add a new statement, right? We have one statement, two statements. So we're gonna add a third statement here and it's going to allow us to get objects and list buckets so that we can grab a bucket and list the objects inside of that bucket for the bucket Cloudcast artifacts that already exist under this account. So the objects in Cloudcast artifacts and the bucket itself. All right, so we'll review this policy and save changes. Now this role that we're gonna assign or is already assigned to our Node.js function has permission to list out the objects inside of this bucket and even download them if I wanted to, but we're not gonna do that in our case. Okay, so why are we doing that? Well, I wanted to have an excuse to do um, stuff with NPM, right? To create a node modules directory. So let's do NPM init. The package name is foofunk node.js. That's great. Versions one, why not? Description, entry points, index.js. No test command in our case. No gets, no keywords, no author, no license. Is this okay? Yes. Great. Now, I need and want to install something. So I want to get the AWS SDK client S3 project here. That is going to download that. We're going to have a node modules directory, and then we can reference this inside of our code. Okay, that's in place here. Let's go ahead and edit our index.js file. And I'm basically just going to overwrite this whole thing and paste in some code that I have ready here. So let's go ahead and look to see what this is going to do. All right, so we're going to import, we're going to require the S3 client and the list objects command from the client S3. That's part of the AWS SDK. We'll create a new S3 client. We happen to be running in the region US East 2, the version latest for the API of S3. And then we're going to have a bucket name. So the bucket name is Cloudcast Artifacts, the one we just gave ourselves permission to run over here. And then we export that same function, right? So handler is the, still the function name or the variable that contains the function here. It's an async function. We get some events data, we get some context, and we can do stuff with it. In our case, we're just going to send the list objects command into the S3 client for the bucket that we defined up here. This is gonna have a response. That response, if we don't get an error, it's gonna list out the objects inside of this bucket. And we'll just console that log it so that we get the results in CloudWatch. And then we can return some stuff because why not return stuff? Okay, simple enough. But now we have a bunch of stuff here, right? We have a node modules directory. We have a package.lock, a package.json, all that good stuff. So first things first is I'm gonna remove index.zip. We're not gonna use a layer yet. We're actually just gonna package this all up into the Lambda function and run it and just make sure it works without doing anything extra here. So we're gonna remove index.zip and recreate it. So zip dash R9 Q, so it's quiet. R is just telling it to refresh the index.zip file in case it exists, but I already deleted it. Nine is uh, quote unquote better compression and alerts more. Q is just so it's quiet so we don't have to see it add in every single file from node modules um, as an output to my console here. I'm going to zip everything up into the current directory except I want to exclude output.json and that's it. Just want to exclude output.json because it doesn't need to be there. Okay, that's done. Our index.zip file is 9.8 megabytes, which makes sense thanks to our node modules directory. 
So now we can go ahead and update our Node.js function with our new index.zip file and tell it to publish that. This is going to take a second because it's going to upload that 10 megabyte file. And while 10 megabytes is small, updating the function code also takes a bit of time because it's doing more than just updating the zip file. It's getting it in place and updating the, zip, the uh, function and all that good stuff. Now, publishing this is a little bit slow, and that's also why we use layers, because with layers, you can have stuff in the Lambda function already via that layer, and the things that you use to update your code, like the actual code base that you send when you update your function code is much less, right? Especially if you don't do the node module stuff. Optionally, like node modules is one use case for a layer. Not everyone does that because it gets a little bit complicated when you have to update a layer every time with the new node modules directory on top of updating your code. Okay, so that finally finished. We should be able to go ahead and invoke this function fairly quickly. Let's just head over here quick. Confirm in our functions, Node.js function. We have a new version here, version four in this case, 17 seconds ago, that looks good. Let's go ahead and invoke this thing. So invoke uh, foo func node.js request response output.js. We're not passing this a payload this time because it doesn't care about the payload. It's just gonna go ahead and um, grab information about that bucket in S3. All right, that looks successful. So we can output this and we just get a log line, right? Because all it does is return the log stream name here. So let's go ahead and go back to CloudWatch here, refresh here. So the foofunk node.js will have a new log stream and we can see there's some information here. So we did a console.log of the output there of the response we got from that request and this is it. And it has three objects inside of that S3 bucket, right? So these are all MD5 hashes, or uh, actually I think these are Git SHA hashes. And there were just a bunch of dozens of files that exist inside of that bucket that was named Cloudcast Artifacts. Okay, so that was successful. Let's stop the video here. In the next video, we're gonna use a layer to add the node modules directory to that layer and create it. And then we'll attach that layer to our Node.js function and we'll see how Lambda layers work.